Hey guys, welcome to my uh, next playthrough. This is uh, the setup here for Day of Heroes. I'll take and um, get into the uh, specifics here in just a sec. Uh, a couple things I wanted to touch on real quick first. Uh, Dean Peters, if you see this video, get in contact with me. I still haven't heard from you about uh, winning the game. I need to get your information to get that off to you. Um, one other thing I mentioned in the uh, unboxing I just did for Struggle for the Galactic Empire that I got a professional video editor to take and uh, help improve the quality of my videos and thought I thought I was getting it you know I thought I was a smart guy but I swear that's like going from a paper airplane to flying a jet engine it is just a huge difference so many buttons and things and all that and I actually got a video edited and you know put out and it it just crapped out it went to nothing so it's going to take me a little bit to get used to that until i get that figured out i'm going to keep using the program that i know at this point the basic one here uh so you guys don't have to wait for me to learn that uh but look for a increase in quality it was nice because i was able to touch on the lighting and some of the contrast and make things just a little easier to see and a little more clear um, and really take advantage of the, the high def, but I don't know, something I did, it, the video rendered and it came out to something like 200 gigabytes worth of rendering. It was this huge file. I'm like, okay, something's wrong here because it, it filled up my external hard drive in a second with one video that just, that was totally off. Uh, all right. So down to the specifics here, uh, someone had mentioned that they wanted me to get into the setup of the scenarios of why I put what troops where. So I laid them all out here. We've got the Rangers, Delta, helicopters, and then the Somali units here. In this specific scenario, the American forces will set up first. I'll show you on our scenario book. It's called a short hop. There's our little blurb telling you what it is. Your group of Somali forces. Uh, you've got a bunch of different types of counters. They have a bunch of RPGs, which is to be expected, and COT, which it took me a little while to find that counter when I was actually looking through the book. Uh, four leaders, a couple of mobs, some roadblocks. The Americans have six units of Rangers, a hero. And I'm wondering, did they take and get the heroes for Day of Heroes from uh, Aliens? Because they've got Hicks and Hudson. That just, that tickled me. Um, kept, uh, three of the Delta units, uh, they've got some 40 mic mics, and then this is the support weapons here, and, uh, heroes and leaders and stuff for the Rangers that they start with. A couple of M60s, a couple of 249s, uh, two more 40 mic mics, which those operate in an interesting way. I'll explain that more in the, uh, uh, game when I'm going through it, but I'll, I'll touch on that here in just a sec. Uh, medic, some leader stuff. They have one Little Bird, one Black Hawk, and one Delta Team Sniper in the Black Hawk, which that's actually pretty cool. All right, so when I was trying to figure out where I was going to put who and what, the Delta guys, the three that you get, they have the neat ability to self-rally. So there's a little counter Delta. And when you flip them over, you see they've got that SR there. So they're weakened, shaken, and all that stuff, but they can self rally so they don't have to be on top of each other. Now, some of y'all might have seen the pictures I posted on the, uh, the Facebook group, but I had played through a couple of turns of this, so I basically just backed it up and hit record because I like the scenario. It was, it was fun, and it's not going to take me forever to get it uh, played through and up for you guys. The Delta guys have to start in this block of four. Oh, speaking of which, yes, I'm using the smaller non-X map uh, map, just the regular one. It's because the uh, X maps are just so big, it would be very hard for me to keep it in frame and all that stuff. You see, I've got the poster frame with plexiglass on it, and I've got the map underneath it. One half, so just here and over of the X, map, uh, X maps would almost fill this, all right? And you're only looking at about half of it right now. It would just make it hard for me to film. If I wasn't filming, I would definitely be using the X-Maps. Because it's just awesome like that. Anyway, they start here 
and the C11, C12, D11, D12 block of buildings. So there's three of them and two sets of 40 mic mics and that has two rounds per so you can use it twice. And when I was first reading through it I thought they would be used like just regular support weapons but in fact they just increase the firepower and you can use it twice. So this Delta guy you know with his two firepower if he used a 40 mic mic he could take and uh, have a four firepower you know for that round but he flipped the counter over to its one side if he used it again he removes the counter it's gone so what i was thinking is i would take and put these guys here as kind of spotters because they're kind of out in the open where they start so if i put them in this little compound they'll kind of cover the area because our goal our objective is to get to these buildings here there's a group of buildings here four squares and then two other squares across the street that we have to control by the end of the round by the end of the game which is like seven turns something like that the enemy is starting pretty much along a grid here and here so they've got the u.s forces pinned in and you either have to push up and over or right and up one of the two uh, it just depends so with these guys here I keep them back from the front so they're not gonna get lit up right off the bat and they can kind of peek up the road they can peek down this road kind of cover the Rangers as they move in because the Rangers start down here now the two helicopters start off the board you've got your one Blackhawk here with its just machine guns and then your Delta sniper which depending on if, how the helicopter is moving if he is flying if the helicopter is flying it's 1d6 if he's hovering it's 2d6 on the sniper so you want to try to hover when you can the little bird is awesome because it has a lot of firepower machine guns and a double ordnance attack which it shows back there which if you can get close which you can because helicopters have pretty much unlimited movement you can take and just crush a, a square in this game and just light up everything in it but if they catch one of these helicopters with a rocket it, it's pretty much game over now what I did with the rest you see down here is there were six Ranger squads and then three units that can rally all right two leaders and a hero so I went with a hero and two leaders as the leaders of this the group the platoon I guess you would say so one leader here with two uh, ranger squads and then I divided up their support weapons a little bit to try to even out the firepower that they had this bottom one is gonna have two of the 249s since they only have a one firepower that way they're each getting a little bonus and the 240 which is a heavier machine gun has a two for a firepower and just a bit farther range so it kind of evens out the firepower a squad with a 240 a squad with a 240 and a squad with two 249s it wouldn't be done that way in real life um, you know we just shoot them with whatever the hell we got all the bullets <laughs> but it makes sense to me in this game to try to even it out the squads with the I, I'm saying squads because I'm thinking of as individual troops I say the platoons here that have uh, the 240s also have one guy carrying uh, 40 mic mics the 40 millimeter grenades for those of you not in the military so that gives me three stacks of units to take and push with and these guys have serious firepower compared to the Somali units because if you look here they've got three six four with an assault move these guys and using the 40 millimeter grenades uh, 240s and 249s I mean they're easily hitting 10 11 firepower you know in one turn especially when they've got their uh, a hero or a leader boosting them up now unfortunately 
these guys have to start at the bottom. If I can get them stacked up here, which I can't look at this. I'm just knocking them all to hell. All right, come on, stack up for me. There we go. Oh, uh, where's my guy? And there's one medic right there, which I just decided to take and send with my hero unit. He could have gone with any of the ranger units. Just a random call on that one. All right, stack up here. Now, which one is it? I think it is C17. Yep, C17 right here in the bottom. And the rangers can start anywhere on C17 or any hex around it. Okay, so it gives them nine squares to start on, but you really don't want to start out in the street. And since they got to set up first, best bet is to take and just put them in these buildings here. Nice little stack of them. And we'll take and put our leader in this bottom corner. Or our uh, hero. Which people liked how I was naming them the last time. Which one is this? Is this Hudson? Yeah, it's Hudson. Alright, so Hudson's right here in the bottom right. We're going to hope he lives this time because I'm playing as the Rangers. I don't want to play this. Somalis. Got my helicopters tucked over to the side. They don't come in until turn two. Now our American units are set up. Uh, small little clump of them here. Small little clump of Delta here. And they're going to be pushing this direction towards their objective. Now the Somalis have weird rules. All right. They're mobs. They're not even militias, they're just groups and gangs of guys with a bunch of guns and RPGs. They do have leaders though, which you can see. I've got the four leaders lined up top. I gave each leader a support weapon, which is three RPGs and one RPD, which is their version of a, a M60. Now, the only way the Somali squads, like their version of squads, can have more than two in one stack is if they have a leader. So I've got three squads with each leader. Um, each of the leaders has uh, support weapons, like I said, and some of the squads have uh, support weapons. One of the squads even has cot. Their counters, these are, okay, I dropped that one on the floor. I'll grab it after I get done filming. Come on, come on. These are their best counters, all right? A one, three, four. Those are their good counters. The majority of their counters are a 0, 3, 4, and none of their guys go to shaken. They all get reduced to a half squad when they get hit. So it goes down to a 0, 2, 4 when they take damage. All of their units are like that. They just get wiped out. The mob units up here, I'll explain in just a sec. So since it's like that, um, oh, one other little special rule with the guys is the first one to fire, okay, say you've got three Somali squads here, for each extra Somali squad after the first, you add an extra firepower. That's where these guys can actually start doing some damage is when you get them grouped up. So if you had a squad that had the one firepower and then two zeros you would actually be firing with a three firepower because you're adding one for each one of the others uh, you guys will see it'll make a lot of sense when i take and actually get it down to the board so let me take and get these guys stacked up and you guys won't believe it, that counter went flying underneath my table so i'm gonna have to grab it after i get done filming sorry about that but it's not gonna affect anything so we get them stacked up here with their groups of guys and you'll notice they actually have a few left over those guys i found when i was playing my little practice game just using a few random one-off squads is a great way to spot my rangers and delta forces because I'm not going to want to opportunity fire at those guys because they're really not worth firing at. I need to fire at the large groups. But these guys, the little extra ones, are great for spotting uh, my troops. 
they can move up right adjacent, which in the square game, if it's corner to corner, vertice to vertice, you're considered adjacent. So any square around it, around a square is adjacent. After getting to the stacking limits for these four groups, I have three left over. So I'm planning on putting those just around to make mad dashes up against my guys to spot them so the other groups can just hit them with uh, RPGs and machine gun fire and AK fire and all that good stuff. So in this scenario, the uh, Somalis can spawn or start anywhere in column F and G, which are these columns here, all the way up and down, and rows eight and nine all the way across. So they're pretty much like this, all right, across the board here, here. And they can spawn or start anywhere. I keep saying spawn. I'm trying to think of what's the, the best way. I want to take and put them in such a way that they'll be able to really get a good view of my guys while still having some cover. If you'll notice, some of the buildings have red dots and some have um, black dots. The red dots are like your heavy construction from uh, other games. So if it's a black dot, it's just a one terrain modifier here. And if it's a red dot, it's a two. Terrain modifiers are not large in this game, not at all. So let's take and since the objective is over here and I know they're gonna go that way, I should probably put my forces in that direction we'll take and we'll put one here on the objective to hold it because we know they're going to be coming in that direction we'll take and put another on this corner covering down as they're coming in we'll put another in this heavier zone of cover covering this street and this corner here and where do i want to go with these last guys Hmm. See, because if I put them here, they're going to be in the line of fire here if they get spotted. Okay, I'll tell you what, I might just go ahead and put them here or there. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Let's start them here so they'll be out of the way. And then we can take and put one of these guys here one of the one-offs we'll put a one-off here and we'll put another one off here all right and my goal for their one-offs these just single counters are not to attack just to run up and get adjacent to my guys that way they're spotted and the other guys can move up and do some damage I don't know, I'm thinking maybe I should put him here, but I'm thinking these guys with all the firepower they have, if they have a line of sight on them, they're going to crush them. If they spot them, they're gone. Like I can wipe them out real quick. I'll leave them back there until these one-off counters get them marked. That way they're not going to get chewed up on the first turn and it forces me to move towards them. They're kind of looped around over here. Uh, the only other thing to touch on is these guys. These are the mob counters. You can see it's zero, zero, 002, and then it's got a 2M there. They have a 2 um, firepower or attack in melee. Uh, the thing is with those guys, you're rolling a D6 when you attack with them, and sometimes they disperse, sometimes they actually do what the Somali player wants them to do and sometimes I control them. Sometimes the American player will control them. Uh, they're very odd. Actually, let me flip to the page of the book. I'll show you guys that real quick. They, the mobs are odd. Okay, so here, see where it says mob activation and dispersal table? You see it has a whole bunch of different things and you're going to roll off on that each turn for each mob uh, to determine what they're doing. So those are a little harder to use on the solo system. I roll off on them, see what they're doing, and then I make a judgment call whether it's to pull a card for them or just do what's written down. Like sometimes they'll just disperse and they're gone. Uh, sometimes they're spawning units. 
Uh, one other thing about the game is these roadblocks here. There's two in the game. They have the potential to spawn units all the way from the basic mob up to the Somali's best uh, uh, squads. So they might start with just a little bit more in troops, you know, and it seems like even though they have numerical superiority, that they'll get wiped because of the clear difference in firepower, but they do have the ability to generate units each turn. You're rolling a 2d6 and uh, spawning units depending on uh, what you roll, and they can even spawn leader units from the roadblocks. So it's interesting uh, to see how it plays out. It, um, it was kind of batting back and forth when I was playing it the other day. I had done well and pushed up over to the right and was making my way towards the objective, but they had kind of pushed down from the uh, north and crushed my uh, Delta guys. So we'll see how it works. I set it up similar, except I gave the Somalis better positions than I did in the previous game, so it should be much more of an uh, even match. Um, that's it for now. Uh, just wanted you guys to see the, uh, the setup for it. Um, I'm going to keep trying to learn that uh, new editing software. But until then, I'll keep uh, post vi uh, posting videos with the old one so you guys uh, have plenty of stuff to watch. Uh, keep letting me know if there's any other scenarios or other uh, game systems like NAM or Red Star. I, like I said, I had one request for uh, Red Star already, so I've lined that one up for uh, a game scenario next. Anyway, y'all take care. I'll see you in the next video.